Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at Wall Street. And by Wall Street, I mean the major banks on Wall Street and the derivatives time bomb. I've spoken about derivatives many times through the years. I even have a playlist entitled Derivatives File. It's got 19 videos. I will probably put uh, this video in there too eventually. So if you want to know more about derivatives, go through my videos, look at them. Uh, you don't have to watch all of them. Just pick the one that seems the most interesting to you. Uh, and the reason why I'm talking about derivatives is because of leverage. And by leverage, I mean how people who dabble <laughs> in derivatives use a lot of margin, uh, they uh, leverage uh, many times over. And that's what they do. And a lot of times their excuse is that it's just hedging. And for the system, the excuse is that they all net out. Unless, of course, you have a, a collapse of one of the entities uh, that's involved in derivatives, like you had with Bear Stearns <laughs> and then Lehman's, of course, in 2008. There's a daisy chain of, uh, yeah, domino effect. So, and why am I talking about this today? Well, because Zero Hedge noted yesterday in one of its articles. So they've seen here that uh, there's a lot of very senior people from Goldman uh, jumping ship. And that's very interesting because why would you want to leave Goldman Sachs? to go anywhere else, really, on Wall Street. I think the only place you leave Goldman Sachs to is to become uh, head of a central bank or head of a treasury or a prime minister, right? So here's the story. It says, what's going on at Goldman? Another senior executive just jumped ship. In the last few days, Goldman Sachs has lost two very senior executives from the investment banks, two biggest bets on the future, consumer finance, Marcus, and wealth management. And now the behemoth's chief lawyer is abandoning ship, leaving many asking what is going on at Goldman. So um, I won't go over it. <laughs> it's a very short article. I'll put it uh, in the description box below. I put a link to it. But suffice it to say, it's very unusual that the, I think it's four, four of them so far have left. And this is just in the last few days. So, and, and they've gone to firms that uh, really you wouldn't think much about. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, why, why leave Goldman Sachs to go to these firms? So, yes, I, I'm not saying Goldman Sachs is in trouble, but it warrants watching. And it's not just Goldman Sachs that I would watch because if there's trouble at Goldman Sachs, uh, there's trouble everywhere on Wall Street. And uh, what I'm going to do today is look at the Office of Controller of Currency. Yes, it sounds really boring, <laughs> but uh, they have a derivatives report every quarter. Their latest report is uh, for the third quarter of last year. So it's not up to date, but it's the best we can get. And, and before I go uh, and look at the major Wall Street banks and how much deri derivatives they have, and you'll be shocked how much uh, derivatives they have, we're going to look at uh, their notional amounts of precious metals contracts by maturity. Precious metals, of course, would include gold, silver, platinum, palladium, uh, those, those kinds of metals, but especially gold and silver, I would say. And the reason why I'm doing that is that uh, the bullion banks and people like Jeff Christian of the uh, CPM group <laughs> who used to work for Goldman Sachs, their excuse is that uh, the bullion banks uh, are hedging for their clients, right? And uh, so I wasn't going to look at this, but I just saw this before the part that is important for the video. And as you can see here, uh, from the fourth quarter of 2018, and this is pretty much when gold was really starting to go up quite well. Look at 
how much their notional derivatives exposure uh, increased. So, and third quarter of last year, it's over 60 billion. So has gold and silver production really gone up that much for them to, to have to hedge? No, I would say that uh, they're naked shorting uh, the precious metals in order to keep it, keep the price suppressed. Yes, the price has gone up a lot. I, I mean, uh, from the end of 2018, I think it went from uh, around uh, 1500 And then we got up to, I'm not sure where it was, maybe below 1500 But of course, we got up to 2000 last year, above 2000 So there you go. Uh, that's another... Um, point there that shows you, you know, why would these banks need to uh, be so heavily involved in precious metals? If it were for mining clients, yes, I, I would expect some hedging for them, but not to this extent. So now to the important part where we will see how exposed to derivatives the major Wall Street banks are. So it's it says uh, 3Q2020 Notional amounts of over-the-counter and centrally cleared derivative contracts. So over-the-counter are derivatives that are written up by the banks, by counterparties that deal with the banks. If you watch The Big Short, uh, Dr. Michael Burry, he goes to Wall Street and he says, I want you to design me uh, a credit default swap on subprime mortgages. Well, that's over the counter. The centrally clear derivative are all the futures contracts that are standardized that, and traded in an exchange. And, and they publish public uh, data. The OTC is very opaque <laughs> and it's a dark market, as, as I think someone in, in the... Uh, Big Short said, <laughs> one of the bankers, at least they were honest about that. And uh, the people who write these derivatives, OTC, yeah, they can do whatever they want with the price. Uh, if you remember during the uh, subprime collapse in the beginning, uh, the, the credit default swaps weren't being marked up because they wanted to get it in on the action because they were short the credit default swaps. But anyway, uh, the thing that uh, is really important to note is that these numbers are in billions. So you've got JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan has a total notional and notional basically is, is this. If you buy, for example, a gold future and you put $5,000 down in margin, uh, that's not the notional amount. The notional amount is uh, the price that you buy the future at times uh, the size of the contract, which is 100 ounces. So you take 1750 uh, times 100, you get the notional amount. That's the notional amount. That's the amount that the counterparty or the uh, trading firm or bank controls in terms of uh, uh, exposure. So JP Morgan at the end of Q3, at 65,799 total. <laughs> yeah, so that's in billions. So uh, that's actually 65.8 trillion. So that's huge. US economy is 21 trillion, right? Uh, just keep in mind uh, that, that uh, statistic. Uh, you've got Citibank uh, with 38.9 trillion, and you've got Bank of America, 17.7 uh, .7 trillion. And then you get Goldman Sachs, uh, 38.8 trillion. And it doesn't seem that much compared to uh, Citi and JP Morgan. And, and uh, even though I'm more of a macro big picture guy, I, I have looked at some data, micro data, so to speak, balance sheet data, and it's not my specialty. And if any of you would like to comment on what I say, Please do correct me uh, because this is, as I said, not my specialty. So what I did here, um, I looked at uh, these notional amounts and then I went into Yahoo and, and I looked at, uh, this is data you can all find under financials for each of these four banks. And I looked at their total equity, which uh, I assume is the shareholders equity. 
in in the I worked out the leverage to shareholder equity uh, that these notional uh, derivative uh, amounts correspond to. You know how how many times over have they leveraged their equity? It, it's like uh, you, for example, if after uh, accounting for all your debts and all your assets, your equity comes at a million dollars, for example, let's say, or it's a big number, but let's just make it simple. So what you do with this number that I'm going to show you is multiply the $1 million to just show you how exposed to derivatives you would be. So I looked at uh, JP Morgan and uh, their uh, total equity is around $280 uh, billion uh, dollars of shareholder equity so and they have about 65.8 trillion in notional derivatives exposure so they're exposed 200 and, well their leverage sorry is 235 times so yes that's huge <laughs> 235 times but wait until we uh, come up with a Goldman number I'm gonna go through uh, Citibank now their uh, equity, total equity is about 200 uh, billion. So with their derivatives at, at about 39 trillion, it corresponds to 194 times leverage, which is a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Bank of America, 273 tri uh, sorry, 273 billion total equity. Uh, derivatives exposure 17.7 trillion so they're only 65 times uh, leveraged but this is the the granddaddy of leverage here uh, Goldman Sachs Goldman has <laughs> almost uh, as much exposure as Citi uh, group it's got 38.8 trillion uh, derivatives exposure and its total equity is 95. 9 billion so their leverage 404 times <laughs> I told you uh, yes they're highly leveraged so that means let's say if you had a million dollars in equity you would be uh, leveraging uh, up to 400 uh, million <laughs> in derivatives exposure so this leverage is uh, a good thing uh, when uh, markets and asset Prices are moving the right way for uh, Goldman's and the other Wall Street banks' uh, notional deri derivative exposures. And, and a lot of it, of course, is hedge. But let's say you get a 1% negative move in terms of their net position. Well, uh, you're talking $380 billion and And, and uh, I mean, this would wipe out their uh, total uh, shareholder equity. Uh, and you might want to correct me uh, on this. It could be wrong, but even though it, it, it's huge, this exposure uh, makes Wall Street very vulnerable to volatility. That you see, that's the the problem with derivatives when they get volatile. And when you see the stock market get very volatile or starting to drop very sharply, or when you see the the ten year yield or the bond market. Uh, not only uh, rise the yields, but also be very choppy like we had last March, March 2020, when the system was on its knees. Uh, you get intraday moves that are uh, unheard of, uh, and that's volatility. That's when the derivatives become a time bomb. And why haven't they become a time bomb? Uh, I've been talking about this for a few years. Well, because you've been saving uh, Wall Street through uh, the Federal Reserve, through the Treasury, because they can only inject liquidity into the system because <laughs> they deal in something called the national debt that is lumbered onto your backs. And I would say as well, these derivatives are now, now also uh, backed by FDIC insurance. A, a few years ago, uh, this was during the Obama administration. I, I think there was a bill passed and no one saw it. There was a provision in the bill about the FDIC insuring uh, derivatives. Uh, so, and that's what I'm trying to say. And that's why uh, 
uh, volatility is really important. And uh, I think it's um, very uh, unlikely that the Fed will allow volatility in the bond market. And volatility usually uh, comes about from a rising uh, yield in bond markets when prices are dropping. Yes, I saw that yesterday. Uh, Chris Marcus put a clip of Jamie Dimon saying that he wouldn't buy the 10-year note. But is he really being honest? Uh, so there you go. Uh, Wall Street, derivatives, and Goldman Sachs, we need to keep an eye on things. As I said, I'm not saying Goldman Sachs is in trouble, but it's very uh, strange that senior people like that are leaving or jumping ship. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. Is 10 to 9 a.m. London. Uh, we've got gold, spot gold at 17.27. It's down $10. Very frustrating sentiment. In paper gold is very low. Uh, I know that the physical price is completely different, of course. Uh, so we're just going to have have to weather this out, batten down the hatches. Uh, would you really want to be exposed to the banking system? I wouldn't. So the high's been 1741 and the low 1726. Not surprising when Europe comes in. Uh, there's a lot of manipulation as well. Uh, LBMA is in London, of course, and you've got the bullion banks, the BIS in Basel. Uh, silver, though, is holding up fairly well. It's only down 8 cents at 26.65. Range has been 26.84 to 26.54. Uh, the Dow futures up 181. Uh, the uh, S&P futures up 24. NASDAQ is up 110. Uh, currencies are fairly steady. Pound is up slightly, 139.72. Yes, uh, there, there is uh, the budget today. Uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer is presenting the budget. Uh, if you want to know my view on the budget, listen to this video by uh, Godfrey Bloom. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to the to the video below in the description and up in the cards. And Godfrey Bloom describes exactly how I feel about the budget, so I'm not going to go over it. Um, Euro is uh, unchanged, 120.83 dollars up slightly versus the yen, 106.88 dollars down uh, slightly versus the yuan at 646.60. Uh, high grade copper. Uh, down two thirds of a percent at 419, still quite elevated. Uh, WTI uh, 59.72, that's up uh, very small, pretty virtually unchanged. And to the 10 year yield, yes, Greg Manorino is in some uh, sense right. Uh, it, it looks like uh, they've stabilized the 10 year yield price, it seems to be set right now in the last few days between 140 and 145. Right now it's at 143, up one basis point. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.